Today I'm doing kind of an interesting little project. Um, I'm out of these and I need them for something I'm working on, so I figured it would probably be of interest to people here. Um, you're not going to see me looking at the camera on this one. I'm really trying to show you what I'm actually physically doing here. So what we're doing is we are taking, um, we are making a SATA to PCI Express 6-pin adapter plug. And this will let me plug a video card into a SATA power plug. So let's get started here. Um, you will need a few things, and these are things that normal people may not have sitting around. <clears throat> because of what I do, I have a lot of this stuff, I just get it. These are, um, they're little adapters that Dell uses with a lot of their machines for, uh, for the micro machines, the little small form factor ones, that let you take one SATA plug and turn it into two. Um, I normally just put a sink because I, when I get those units, I did, I've done some videos on them. When I get them, they usually have two small drives in RAID versus one big drive, and I usually end up switching over to one big drive. Um, so I don't need these. They're kind of a useful piece of equipment, though, for a few different purposes. I'll probably end up doing a couple videos with these. Um, you need that, and then you need a six pin power plug. Um, I get, I, I go through so many power supplies, occasionally I get a dead power supply, and uh, I just clip all the connectors. Um, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the wiring I use for my little projects is PC power supply wiring because most of it's good, solid, high quality 18 gauge wire, which is, I mean, it's pretty beefy wire for small, for small electronics. So I hold on to it and occasionally I have uses for it. You also will need, depending on how you do this, you'll need a few different, um, to do it right anyway, you'll need a few different uh, uh, sizes, diameters of uh, heat shrink wrap, as well as a heat shrink. Uh, technically, it's just a heat gun. And obviously, your scissors and other stuff. So the first thing I do <clears throat> is I clip this off. I could, I could leave it on, but for this purpose, I don't need both, I guess maybe for utility purposes, maybe I should, I don't know, my general, my general take on it is if you're going to do this, if you're going to run a, uh, a PC or a, uh, a video card or even a single of, uh, of a video card's two power plugs off of a either SATA or Molex, um, I know not all power supplies have it all segregated, but just to be on the safe side, <clears throat> I prefer to only have, if I'm going to do this, if I can, I prefer to only have the video card plugged into that strand. I don't like it plugged into both hard drives and or CD drives and the video card. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut just this piece. So we don't need that. Um, the way PC power is set up, this is almost universal. It's pretty much always this way. Um, yellow is 12 volt. Black is ground, and red is um, 5 volt, which we're not going to need 5 volt for this. We only need 12 volt. So what I do is I clip this, and then I seal that off later. You probably could get away with not doing so, but I wouldn't recommend it because uh, this is going to be running off your power supply, and so... Um, you really don't want to risk shorting out one of the more expensive components in your computer and or your power supply. Um, not when it's completely unnecessary. So I'm kind of lazy. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any um, wire clippers here, so I'm just going to separate this with my teeth. Okay, so 12 volt ground. So I put this little wire guard on here. Um, you don't actually have to. Um, I did it so that what I create here will be aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to pull this back. I might cut some of this too. Let's see, how much of this do I have? Ah, uh, no, I guess not. Well, eh, maybe. Let's cut a little. Okay, there 
is that. And then in order to hold that in place, <clears throat> I'm gonna zip tie it just to keep it out of the way here. It'll expand back over. Check something here real fast. I like to use heat shrink wrap in the color of the wire if I can, but it's I don't always have it available, so sometimes you gotta use what you have. So I'm gonna put one. This is gonna come over the twisted wire. Okay, so then, same thing, I'm just going to use my teeth to strip this. Actually, let's see here. Now we're going to do this on. strip these And then, this is the way I do it. Different people do this differently. This is the way I do my wire connections. It's kind of a technique I came up with myself. solder this if you want. I'm not going to solder it. The way I do it is strong enough. There's going to be zip ties and stuff holding this all together once I'm done. Again, this is the way I do it. I'm sure somebody that's into electronics will tell me, oh no, you can't do it that way, but I've been doing it this way for a while. It works just fine. I'm going to do something else here. Let's see. I wouldn't normally use electrical tape. That's not electrical tape. Let's see. That's it. So normally I wouldn't use electrical tape on something like this, but in this case, I'm actually only using it to add a little bit of diameter to the wire just because we have so much diameter difference between that wire and that wire. But then this is gonna this is gonna be covered up um, with heat shrink and it's also going to have a zip tie holding it in place for strength as well. Okay. 
And again, I know some people say, oh no, you have to solder it. My take on it is, the way I'm doing this is sufficient. Um, and you can always argue that you could do this or that to make it a little bit better. If I did solder it, then it would be, oh, well, you could buy higher quality solder. And then, I mean, you could use this technique. That This works. So... So that is our yellow. In an ideal world, I would like to have another yellow wire. Um, obviously, these three uh, wires can carry more current than this one wire. Um, I've tested this. I know it works. I've, I've been using these adapters for years. and. Even when you buy them off the open market, they're constructed in generally the same way. So I know they work. I believe we have 18 gauge wire coming off of this. What do we got here? I'm pretty sure it's 18 gauge, so I'd, I'd have to look up the current carrying capacity of the 18 gauge, but... Okay, so we have this finished. The only thing you gotta do is this. So this has this is gonna have two effects. It's going to hold this on, it's gonna hold that um, the cable cover on from moving around. It'll also add strength to um, to my attachment points or my twists. And I will actually do one more right here. Okay, so we're good to go. One completed SATA to PCI Express 6 pin. I will actually pop that on the video card here in just a second on the camera. And move the camera a bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make sure this works. Uh, this is a bunch of parts that don't really matter. It's nothing expensive, so if something gets fried here, it's not a big deal. So we plug this in. Uh, let's see if we can do it right there. Plug it into the SATA, like that. And we plug it into the video card, just like that. And you'll probably be able to see this come up on the monitor, assuming it works right. Looks like we got power to the board. Turn the sucker on. And it looks like everything works. So the one thing we can do to make sure it's actually working is turn this off. Just make sure this isn't one of those cases where you have a video card where it'll um, where it'll uh, it'll run off of a single. We just unplug this and turn it back on. And assuming we're 
This should, it'll come on. Everything on the computer is working except for the video card. So you'll see the keyboard come on in a second in green. Oh, you might. I think it normally does. Yeah, so the keyboard comes on. So we're in the BIOS. It's just, there's no video output because it can't, it can't show video with no power to the video card. So anyway, that is how you make a SATA to PCI Express 6 pin. If you have the parts to do this on hand, it, it could be cost effective just because I think I normally pay, I don't know, a couple dollars a piece for them, but I have to wait from them. To get them at that price, I gotta order them in bulk from China and then wait for weeks. So yeah, this could be cost effective. Anyway, I hope everybody finds this interesting and thanks for watching the video.